Okay, so we have a 16 by 20 inch stretch canvas and we're painting a sunset today. Now, before we get to our paints, I wanna establish a horizon and I wanna put that probably somewhere in the middle. Let's go ahead and get it near the middle. I've got a line across there and that'll just give me a good reference point where our horizon is. Okay. So we are going to be using Golden Food Acrylics as well as a couple Liquitex soft body. And we have titanium white, carbon black, and naphthol red for our golden colors. And then our Liquitex are cad orange and Hansa yellow light. All right, now what I'm gonna do is start with some white. I've got some water on my brush as well. I'm using a scrumbling brush by Artist Loft. Our sunset, our sun itself, I should say, is gonna be right in the center. So I'm getting a round area of white. And then before this dries, I wanna pick up some of this yellow, add it to our white. That's good enough to start. Grab some more yellow. Go on the outside of that and just fade it inwards towards the sun slightly. Perfect. I'm going to grab some of this orange, mix it with our color that we already have. Around the outside. And let's see if I can't fan some of that. We're going to have to fix that edge. It's going to be kind of a hard edge, but I'm going to leave it because we have a good base of color right there. So this is only the underpainting, more or less. Now I'm going to get some water, more water on my palette. And we're just going to pick up some of that orange along with some red. Whew, that's going to be really bright. Add some yellow in that. That's going to be super bright. So I think what we'll do is just add some white with some orange, dull that back just a hair. Get some more water, tap it on my palette, pick up some of that water. Whew. And just kind of blend some of that out. Okay, now kind of got a good base of our sun sitting there, but I think what we're going to do is move on to just the overall color of the sky, which is going to be some white, some orange. I'm going to use up all this white. And just a smidget of black. Add that black in there. Maybe some Hansa yellow, some more orange. See how that goes. I think that's a good start. So what I'm gonna do is pick up a larger brush.
I should get an even larger brush than that. I'm going to need more paint, more importantly. Get some white. And we'll grab a, just a little wider brush. Pick up some water. This is just a filbert brush, I guess. Pick up some orange. A little bit of that black. Okay. I'm going to go ahead cover all this sky. This is pretty thick paint now. We're going to go right up to that orange, fade it over that orange, make sure we've got it all covered. do is let all of this dry. Let it all dry. Come back to it in a little bit. Go to the next step. Okay, now that we've let this dry, what I'm going to do next is add the highlights of the clouds. I'm not going to worry about anything else. I know it looks sloppy. I know everything looks a little bit weird right now, but we're just going to focus on the clouds and we'll take it from there. So I've got some fresh white and I'm going to try to pick up some of this yellow. So I've got white and yellow. And I've switched to about a half inch filbert brush. And what I'm going to do is just kind of imagine where are our clouds going to be. And around where they're going to be, we want to add some highlight. And so down low here, and don't think too much into it, just grab some bright color and get it on there. But down low here, keep it small. Nothing has to be for sure yet. So we've just got some small strokes down there. And then as we get up higher, they're going to become a little bit fatter. We're not worried about the specifics of this color. We just know that's going to be close. So we're just going to get it on there. Grab some more color. And actually, what I'll do now. I need to get more orange. Good enough. I'm just going to grab a touch of orange. We're going to mix that in. Because as we get further away,
things are going to get a little bit richer in color, a little more saturated. It's going to get kind of orange. We're just going to get that on there. Okay, so still looks a bit weird. It's sometimes hard to envision where you want to go with something. So let's take it to the next step. And that'll be the clouds themselves. So we've got the highlights on there. Now with the clouds, what we're going to do is we're going to grab I'm just going to make some more orange. We're going to grab basically this color that we had. We've got some of it left on our palette, but we're going to add some more red to it and some black. So more red, touch of black. This is where it gets fun because you can start to see things take shape. Now as we get up higher, we want these to be somewhat darker than the ones down lower. We'll start with this for now. This is really going to just pop. As soon as we get these shadows in, you're going to see what I've been doing. Just squeeze a couple into the, the sun ray here. All right. I think what we'll do is grab some more white along with some black. We'll get some gray. We'll add some red to that gray. Test it out. I'm going to want more black than that. Okay. Grabbing some more red. Just trying to get that right color. Yeah, I'm going to dip my finger in water. Just get some water on the palette. Mix that in. This will be quite a bit darker. You want these clouds up high to appear closer. And the way we do that is we darken them. Okay, so now you can see we have some clouds. But that sky underneath is still missing something. So I'm going to pick that scrumbling brush back up. I think what I might do is switch to some primary yellow if I can find it. There it is. Get some primary yellow. grab our white, pick up that yellow. Quite a bit of moisture on the brush, just trying to roll some of that off. See what this does here. Now I'm going to forget about the orange for just a minute. 
going to add some more yellow to in between the clouds here. Just brightening, lifting that up. So don't worry about the color right away. Worry about the tone, as I always say. And so yellow, just a good kind of in between. We don't need red. We don't need orange. Sorry, we don't need red. We don't need this dirty color here. We're looking for something in between, but that orange is going to be really powerful. So let's just focus on getting it brighter. And we can focus on putting some orange in there, if that makes sense, a little bit later. So you can see that's starting to enhance our sunlight. Appears like we actually have a light source, but it's going to have to be brighter. Maybe. You might be able to try just a touch of red. We're going to keep it very minimal, though. So that just has the same color, really a bright yellow with just a teeny bit of red. It might take another layer or two to get it perfect. Start getting that closer to that light source but leave some of that bright yellow. Get rid of some of that up high. That looks pretty good. Now, I think down low, we will want more of an orange hue. So we'll start by bringing in that orange, but we'll keep it Keep that far away from the sunlight. Get some orange down here and see what that looks like. Probably get a little more of that red. Yeah, just right through there. Kind of out on the outskirts here. And then underneath the sun. Don't put it above. Stay down low. Now, we want some perspective. What, what do we really have going on here? And that's difficult when you're working with a light source. It's hard to determine how saturated you need things to be, how bright or how dark you need things to be. You need to get some kind of reference down. And what I mean by that is we have our line established here. You need some sort of reference to black. I always have a pure black. and a white, and I'm just making a decision here not to go too close to the middle with the black. We'll have some black on the edges here. And it doesn't have to be perfect yet. We just want to get some black down so we know and keep it minimal. It's better to keep it better to keep it a little more minimal to start with, just because it is so powerful. So we're just going to get a tree line established so we know what that looks like against our sky. It's hard to envision that unless we have something to reference. So get that black on there. All right. Now in the middle, we can just get that started. What I was thinking was picking up some of that same color that's up in the sky, but then grabbing some more red. Trying to 
to pick up some black, add some black to that. We wanted to make it look like another ridge back here. So let's just get that in place. And this is not at all what it's going to be, but we have that reference to black. Now that we can really kind of see the sky, compare it to the black. We've got this ridge here, and I think we'll have a better idea how to move forward. But for right now, I need to let this all dry. It's pretty tacky. I'll let it all dry, and then we'll come back for a third layer. Okay, so now we're on with a third layer. We've let this dry, and I'm going to start with what's behind these clouds, clean up some of these areas around the sun. So we're basically just going to mix that same color we had. I've got this scrumbler brush, round blender brush. I'm going to take some yellow, some white, maybe some orange. We're going to test it out real quick. I think I want some more orange. that right color. I kind of like that. That's got it's got more orange than we had in it originally. I'm just kind of as I'm dragging across I'm kind of just pulling it up. I want that to fade out to the left and same with this side. Fade it out. And we're going to want some color up high as well, but just above the sun. Don't put it way off to the side. I can already see that I want this to be brighter. So I'm going to take some yellow and some white, try to brighten that up. Just yellow and white, that'll lift that color up a bit. Now we're just trying to get a good blend, transition between the yellows and oranges. I might take some red along with that white and yellow. Test it out quick here. That's going to be pretty bright. Grab more white and yellow. Okay, we're going to try to add, this has got more red in it, because we want that red to pop near the bottom. Just want more of it. That's pretty good. Now you can see how that red really makes things appear brighter up top here. Now let's think about those clouds one more time. Let's grab some red, black, and white. There's probably some yellow in there as well. Just trying to get a gray tone with some red. Probably add some more color and then darken it just a tad. Just up near the top here, we're going to add this gray color. We're going to add some up top here. Just to separate these clouds up high from the ones down low, even more so. It's going to make them come out even closer towards you. So I like that. I like how everything is looking. I think what we need to work on, I'm just trying to get a 
good dry brush over here. I've got that same filbert brush. I'm just going to pick up some white. I'm not going to worry about the yellow quite yet. But we're going to need some highlights. Much brighter than what we have. So I'm going to stick with pure white. we will glaze some yellow into that. But I think in order to get it bright enough, don't put yellow in it right away. Get that white first. Get it as bright as you possibly can get it. Worry about glazing later, maybe even towards the end of this painting. And the higher we go, we don't want that white to go out quite as far. So keep it right up the middle when you get high up into the sky. really can be whatever shape you want this to be. That's looking pretty good. What we can do when we get further away from the middle is we can grab some orange, mix some orange with that white. You just kind of keep those highlights going off into the edge. Just sneak a few down low here. We can use them to hide imperfections around the sun. It's also a good color, this orange color, kind of create some shadows right in the lightest area of the sun. Drag a couple across there. That's kind of cool. Right. Looking good. Now as we wait for that to dry, these highlights, we're going to want these highlights to dry completely before we keep going. What we can do is work on our skyline down below. So I had some red and some black, some orange. Got a big mess here going now. Just trying to get that right color. Now what we'll do, so I've got the right color I'm going to grab some more black. We're going to darken it. We're going to pretend that there is a ridge that comes down right here. So this is just a little bit darker. It stands out against that far ridge. some trees that are coming up. And what 
we can do is basically take that same color, but I'm just going to include a little white into it. We're going to hide a ridge right there. So this one is further down, then we go up a little bit more, and this ridge comes in, and that far one's a little bit higher. That's going to create more depth. Okay. Now what we'll do is we'll grab some white and some black, along with some red. Put this, we'll put this guy in right here. This is even darker now, and we're just going to go down further. Pick up some moisture on my brush just to keep that flowing. Just like that. Now I'm going to pick up some more water. We're going to grab that black. Um, this black ridge is going to come through about right here. I think. Yeah, we'll put it right there and then it'll kind of go up. Up right there. Okay, so that could be blocked in with some black. I have a big old ridge right there. Grab some more water. Just keep it flowing. Just cover it as best you can. All right, so we'll have a ridge right there. And this ridge here. Not quite as high. Try to push it back just a little bit further as well. some trees there. All right. That looks pretty good. Make sure the bottom nice and straight. We can work on that. We're not worried about the bottom yet. We're just kind of focus on what's up top. All right, so the next thing we're going to do here is we're not going to worry about what's down below here. And even these ridges, I just got some of this black in here, I think, uh, just to see what it would look like. But we're, we're going to split this painting into two, and I will do another video on how I do the water. So let's just keep our focus on the sky for right now. I'm going to take some yellow and white. Got some water in there. It's pretty thin, so this would be a pretty transparent layer. And we're just going to glaze this super bright yellow over some of these white areas. We're going to try to leave more white in the middle and we'll color eyes as we move further away to the edges. You 
See how bright that is? We can really only do that with glazing. It's got to be a transparent layer. It's got to allow that light to glow through the paint. Really, you can see that sometimes that's all you need. What we'll do is we'll grab we'll grab some orange with this as well. Try to get kind of an orange glaze. Pick up some water and really get that transparent. We'll try to glaze some of these outer highlights more orange. and kind of liking how that orange covers some of these clouds. So we're kind of going into the cloud itself. Don't go up into this cloud up high, maybe just the ones that are closest to the white areas. So we just got an orange glaze. Right in the middle, right there. We'll glaze some of the center of this orange. I said any area around those whites, I think we can get away with some orange, even up high, but it's got to be close to the white. Don't go too far away. see how those clouds come alive. Just grabbing more orange. Ran out of color down here. Glaze some orange onto that. Right there as well. color really brightens anything it touches. Sometimes I don't know how much I want to put on, so I just kind of keep going with it. We'll see. See if it works out. Get some over into here. I think I went overboard right in the center. Grab some yellow and white. Shoot for that again. Gonna have to just leave it dry. Maybe take some of that yellow and white, put it right in the center above the, the sun. Just have yellow and white right above the sun in the center. And right through that part as well. I'm just going to try to brighten the center of this, make it look like the sun's really shining up, and then it's making those clouds orange up high. Now I've got some orange and some black and white. We're going to try to get some more shadow right through there. We'll leave it for now. This is just buffing on some gray tones. It's got that nice warm gray that I mixed up for this spot and I'm just continuing just trying to smooth out any areas that might have this color. Just trying to smooth them out. A 
All right, so that's looking pretty good. I'm just about happy with this. I'm just gonna pick up some more white. That sun even brighter. And I think for now, we might just wanna leave this, we'll call this, uh, finished, I think. Sometimes I just try to think of what else could I do, and I think I'll try something real quick here. Bear with me. I'm getting my two brushes over here. And I've just mixed some gray. We're going to tap that gray. That's a little bit dark. We want it to be lighter. I'm just grabbing some more white. There's just a gray. We've got a little water on this brush and we've got a gray on this brush. I'm going to add some gray right between the clouds and then I'm going to buff it with this wet brush. Just buff it on. Kind of bring it towards the center. Fade it out right about there. Some more of it right there and just kind of buff it around. And some up top right here. And then over on the side, anywhere in between the clouds that are pretty far away from our light source, we're just buffing some gray. And you see what it's doing? It starts to appear like it might be some blue sky. It starts to bring the focus more towards, because when everything is nice and warm and yellow, sometimes it loses its effect. So. I'm going to gray some areas down and see if that enhances the center of our painting. But you can already see that I do like that. So we've got some gray going out here. I might add some more gray, but just wanted to show you. We don't need to add blue, add gray. That keeps the painting warm and it makes it appear like it might be some blue sky because that gray is going to be really dull compared to these warm colors we have here. So you don't need blue, just go with gray. I had a question about that not too long ago. Somebody couldn't get that transition right. It was turning green between the oranges and the blues. Well, that blue obviously is gonna make green if we mix it with yellow and orange. So just try gray. We can always glaze some blues along the edges, but gray is just a great way to work on the tone rather than focusing on the colors themselves. So Gray is all we need, I think, for this painting. That brings the focus even more so to the center. I really like how this is coming together. And the last thing that I'll show you, just to enhance that sun, is I've just got the same brush here. I've picked up some red. We're just going to mix around some red and some orange. But we're going to have lots of water. We got lots of water mixed in there. Very vibrant red. And we're just going to glaze that right along the tree line. Look at that yellow. Really stand out against this orange now. All right, so. Hmm. I think what we want to do next is I like it. I like how everything is looking, but there's something we can. I think we can add more contrast, especially to these clouds. Now that I have the gray on here, I think we can get these clouds darker and really make the sun appear brighter. So let's start up with up, up top here, and let's grab some black and some white, and we're going to add some red to that as well. Black, white, and red. Not a lot of red, but. Just some here. So that's gonna be a little darker. Try that for right now. We also have a lot of orange going on here. I think we can dull some of that back. This 
darker color on. And as we get closer to the sun, we're going to have to get that brighter. We're going to add some orange and white and red. Maybe grab some gray, get kind of an in-between. That could We could even use that to kind of blend it out up top here. So we're just going right over the top. It covers really well. Make some more variations in these clouds. My pressure is getting very light with the brush as I get low here in the sky. We don't want a lot of that to cover. Just want to just buff on a thin layer. Kind of buff some of this stuff out up top. So that's looking much better. I like that color contrast a whole lot better kind of hide some of that orange. That orange is really overpowering as we got into some of these clouds. And I think it was because we just didn't have any contrast to it. Now that orange doesn't seem nearly as bright. We've got these clouds built up. Perfect. I love this contrast. I'm going right over some of these ridges. These ridges are just in place, so I've got an idea that there's going to be something here. We are not stuck with any of this. So I can just go right over the top. I want a cloud there in the sky, so I ignore the ridge. I just kind of go right through it. A couple hints of some clouds down here. Perfect. Now I'm going to take... I'm going to wash the brush. And I'm going to take some orange and yellow, some white, a little bit of black. Pick up a little bit of black. Now I want the highlight here to be darker. So I've got some red now I'm mixing in. Some white and black, a very small amount of black. We want it to be brighter. Okay. So this is kind of a reddish, dull tone. It's going to be our highlights for way out here in the clouds. You can also use it to just buff out a couple small areas through here. Uh, we'll get that down below the cloud. Right on the edge of this cloud as well. Now I can poke at this for a long time. And it gets very tedious. And normally this is, I would have sped this up in a previous video. This is why I want to split this into two videos now. Because I'm just showing you that some of this tedious process. There's nothing exciting about any of this. It takes a long time. And as I keep adding and buffing out these little areas, more thoughts come to mind. Things just start to come together. 
but you got to keep working at it. You can't sit back and look at it. So this is the part that I don't share a lot, which is why I wanted to share this today. Just get very undecisive about small things. I start to get really picky. I've got a small amount of paint on the brush. You can see it's not going on very thick, but it's just enough where if you just kind of keep buffing it on there, it starts to appear. And when it appears, it appears very soft. And that's the look that I'm going for. So this is helping me create nice soft transitions. Now I think I might wash, wash the brush. Kind of squeezing out some of the water on my brush. Just stand back. Take a good look at it. And we might be able to take some more black and white. Get an even darker gray. Put that darker gray right there. Can even probably blend it out I'm using my finger at this point. A little bit darker gray. A little bit right there. Right underneath. That looks all right. Blend that out. Okay, so we're getting close. We're getting really close. It becomes a challenge at this point of what to do. And sometimes you just have to walk away from it, move on to the rest of the painting, which will be the lake here down below. And once that is established, then maybe you'll have a new idea for something you want to change. But for right now, boy, we're getting really picky. Okay, so I think the last thing I want to do, I just stood back from this, and there's a break in the video actually. And as I think more about this, as we just re begin to wrap up the sky, I think I can dull some of this area. We, as we get further up into the sky, I think I lost it by keeping too much of this yellow gold around. So we're just going to dull some of this area. Start with some orange. Some white. We're going to add some black and red. I've got some red here. We're going to add that in. I'm going to test it, right? We want an in-between color between our gray and our gold here. That's going to be too dark, I think. Pretty good. You see how that's kind of an in-between color? A little bit darker as we get further into the middle. Keep it on the edge. Work it as we fade into that gray out there. Same over here. Start in that transition zone, which will be right there. And we're going to kind of drag it into the sky. Very light pressure right now. Kind of going around the clouds, trying to stay out of the clouds. pretty good. We'll keep a little bit on the brush as we go further down. Kind of go and make an X motions. This is pretty dry that's going on, but it's just enough to buff on. We'll add some. I'm losing it now, so I'm pushing harder. Add some over to these edges right through here. Little X motions. So that looks 
That looks a little better. I like that even more. And I think what we can do, I think the last part of this that needs to be done, and this is going to get super tedious, this is where we can get into hours into this painting, is fine-tuning the highlights around these clouds, adding small textures to these clouds. Right now we have a pretty straight line across this cloud right here. I think we can break that up. That requires hours, not minutes. But this is all I do is just kind of go right along the edge of the cloud. I like everything else, but I think there can be some work done to just the details of the clouds. And that's just super picky stuff. I'll switch to a really small brush if I do that. But for right now, I think I'm going to leave it. And we'll come back with another video, and I'll show you how to do the water down below. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to look out for part number two of this painting as I work on the water. I'll show you all the details of how I paint the reflection and the ripples. And be sure to follow me on Instagram. Tag me with hashtag paint like a pro. I want to see what you guys are able to come up with as you follow along with these lessons. And as always, I give away a free hand signed art print every week to one of my email subscribers. All you have to do is click this card right here for more info. Be sure to check out my eBay auctions as well as my website. Those links are in the description below if you'd like to support my channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you on another episode of Paint Like a Pro.